This machine has been giving me so much trouble, it almost became a frisbee. But, because I'm tough, I needed to figure out why I was getting so many problems. So what problems did I have? Well, the tension was impossible to regulate. <clears throat> the thread would keep shredding constantly, it just would not do what it's supposed to do, it would get stuck, it would start jamming, it was just absolutely awful. So I'm working on a project for a friend, and you know, I just cannot trust this machine to cooperate. So I thought, well, I've got to tackle this, because I've got to finish this project. So one of the big problems it would do is it would jam and keep sewing until it got a huge wadge of thread and then trying to lift the hoop and get there and snip the threads without damaging the project nearly impossible. However, what you can see here now is it's doing what it's supposed to do at long last. Except for there where I was starting the test and it jammed. I learned what was going on and I made a whole bunch of change. well there's some slight changes to the machine but I took all of the settings to make the machine cooperate. So for this particular thread, which is slightly thicker, I'd increase the tension from the default of 2.8 to 6. That's pretty extreme. Have to set the foot height to zero. It the no matter what, this thread just will not snip. It just it just I've chained the blades, everything else. This is just it just won't do it. Um, so I'm okay with that. And it's strong stabilizer, and for safety, because of this particular project, I can get away with a zigzag plate rather than a straight stitch plate. What, cha what <clears throat> really caused the problem? So this was what took me a long time to figure out. The source of my woes. I'm trying to do this with one hand. Is that good? Let's put the screw away safely, so I don't lose it. Put it over there in the tray with the screwdriver. <clears throat> so, here we go. Ooh, this is still going to be difficult to see, but I will do my best. So, one of the things it used to love to do is the thread would pull out of this, okay? And if you got any curly thread, it would come unhooked. And this part here has to fit very snugly, if you can see there, get my thumb out of the way, underneath to keep the thread from jumping back. <clears throat> that just didn't work very well, so sometimes it would unhook from there and that would come up here and then you'd lose all your tension and it would jam under the foot there. So I put a piece of metal in to keep it from escaping. And I don't know if you can see, it's really difficult to get in here, but I've put a little piece of metal there. You might be able to see it peeking out. And what it does is the thread has to hook past it and then it cannot come out. So it, the thread hooks in between the sensor there and it has to st and it will not come out from underneath this little bit here. So that stopped that problem. Just super irritating. The second part is much more interesting. So there's a thread guide here, which I'm seeing if I can zoom in here. Just there, there's a little thread guide which goes underneath, and then that theoretically makes the thread run along a metal, metal bit and not hook at the plastic. But what I found, and I'm going to just change positions here, here, the the thread would run and touch that little bit of plastic which was getting a groove in it. 
So what I've done is I've got a piece of wire, and it's not very elegantly done, but I've just glued a piece of wire in place, and now that the wire does not touch the underside of the plastic there where it was getting rough, and therefore it stopped shredding my thread, and it also means I can turn up the tension without the thread shredding. So now I am finally getting decent results out of here. And while I've got this off, I might just, just take a look in these discs here to make sure there's no dirt, but they look pretty clean. Just in case there is some build-up over the years of fluff and stuff which prevents the tension from working well. But the good news is I have one on this. It did stress me out a lot, I will admit. So I think I do not want to have to buy a new machine. And I can't understand why this thing is so uncooperative. And the last thing I did was I have this from a Viking machine. This uh, foot. All of the other ones that I use on all of my other machines don't fit properly on here. Whether because of the IDT in the way or they just didn't apply enough pressure for the thread snips to work on normal thread. This tougher thread is just won't cut, it's just not going to do it. But the other thread wouldn't cut either, normal embroidery thread, um, until I put that foot on because it's got to push down and hold the thread while it's doing the cut, but without the proper pressure. So I have ordered a proper faff one, but with delivery at the moment taking forever, I have no idea when it's going to come. It used to be two days from the UK, um, now it's been two weeks since it landed in import customs, so I'm hoping it hasn't gotten lost because they're not cheap. But anyway, I'm waiting for that to happen. So anyway, when you have issues with your machine, do try and diagnose it and fight. Because most of these can be recovered with a bit of surgery. And in this case, I proved the point. It's a bit of learning, but also just making sure it works. Um, anyway, bye for now.